Good morning. Artificial intelligence is attracting trillions of dollars in new investment capital across the world. And the objective of AI technology is not to automate low skill tasks. Those have largely already been automated. The application and development of large language models or LLMs and building giant libraries of data for machines to learn from is to develop applications that can perform high value tasks. If your company can build robots that can wash dishes, you'll make a lot of money. But if you build machines that can perform surgeries, you'll make all the money. The Chinese are building AI hospitals where the objective is to replace doctors. China is using their AI and medical systems to do more work, do it faster, and do it more accurately. We reported on it before when the testing phase for it began, and now they are further along, ready to work with the public. The AI hospital is a partnership between Tsinghua University and a group of companies, and it has 42 AI doctors in 21 departments. They're ready for public testing in the next three months. China acknowledges that they are behind the United States in AI spending and research. But experts here in China believe that they're going to catch up pretty fast. The factories are here, and here they can more readily deploy AI into real-world physical products, like robots and electric cars. And it is just a giant market with huge populations of data to work with. So at this hospital, they've been building the LLMs for medical systems and the key procedures for hospital work registration, consultation, and examination. The doctor agents are being trained to do the work of actual doctors in diagnosis and in treatments. Each of their AI doctors can work with tens of thousands of patients over several days, which would take years for a human doctor. There is another project underway at Shanghai East Hospital and Tongji University, and their LLM, MedGo, was fed over 6,000 medical textbooks and enormous data sets of patient records. So far, the AI doctors at Tsinghua have achieved high degrees of accuracy. 88% accuracy in examination, 95% in diagnosis, and 77% in treatment. And those are high levels. Tsinghua error rates in diagnosis would be 5% then. This is the Harvard Gazette who found that among ICU patients in the United States, 23% experienced diagnostic error, the majority of which left the patient worse off. Johns Hopkins and BMJ published a study that said about 800,000 Americans die or are disabled by diagnostic errors every year. The overall error rate across all disease was 11.1% with spinal disorders showing error rates of 62%. For stroke, 17.5% of patients had errors in diagnosis. A survey of patients showed that 55% of them said that errors in diagnosis was their biggest concern about seeing a doctor. And a survey of doctors shows that half of doctors see diagnostic mistakes at least once per month. And this is another reason why tech investors in China are so optimistic about the medical applications for their AI. Just from what we know right now, where do you think you'll be better off as a patient getting a proper diagnosis and treatment recommendation? A hospital with a human doctor who may be tired or going through a divorce or has another 15 patients to see or hungry or maybe not current in his field? or one of these AI doctor agents who has memorized 6,000 medical school textbooks, along with all the new research that comes along in the future, and who can scour real life medical records of a billion people here in China to try to figure out what your problem is. There is another issue with respect to market friendliness. To foreigners, it may sound a little off when Chinese officials claim to have advantages in these areas. But consider this tech here for hospitals and medical staff replaced by artificial intelligence. It will be a transformative and disruptive technology rolled out in scale first across China 
than in the developing world where there are shortages of top doctors. China knows they've got a market for it, not just here, but in most of the world, once they get it figured out. But in the United States, we should expect a lot of resistance from the American Medical Association and medical schools, and especially from doctors themselves. Doctors in the United States make many times what doctors do almost everywhere else. And so the entire system is highly motivated in making sure that this technology is not widely deployed in the United States. Ironically then, it's much more likely that 10 years from now, patients in the developing world will receive more accurate diagnoses, better treatment options, and more personalized care than a patient in one of the top hospitals in the United States, who's paying a lot more besides. This is Yu Yao in Zhejiang province. Be good. Store up for yourself treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. No man can serve two masters. He cannot serve God and money. 